Hey NAI football fans, Corey Thorpe here with another edition of the NAIF Ball Podcast, powered by AdCraft USA, your custom apparel, merch, and uniform experts. Our friends at AdCraft have been with us for many years now. They've run web stores for us multiple times. These guys are NAI fans and family who are experts in the apparel and merchandise world. AdCraft allows you to take the hassle out of ordering. Let their knowledgeable design and customer service staff handle everything from hosting the store online, shipping the product, and helping your customers so you can get back to the game. Find them online at adcraftusa.com. All right, guys. Tonight we head down south. We've been in the mid uh, mid states for a few weeks. We figured uh, it's time to head south down near Dallas, Texas. Talking with Ryan Smith, the head coach of Southwestern Assemblies of God University, or more affectionately known as SEGU. Coach, how you doing tonight? Man, I'm good. I appreciate you guys having me on. Absolutely, it's our pleasure, man. It's it's um, it's super fun. Uh, you know, keeping up with obviously the Sooners a, a blast to keep up with. But um, one of the things that that I note, you know, especially with with y'all, um, you know, we're we're friends with all the folks over there on uh, the Sayu Sportsnet. Um, and dude, y'all got the best uh, coverage, best product as far as your coverage in the NAI. In, in my opinion, the NAI should just let you produce the national championship game. Talk about <laughs> The guys there that, from a media standpoint, um, making your product look good? Well, to me, it all starts, you know, obviously you guys see who, who's on the broadcast, but John Cookman's our guy. And, and Cookman has a great vision for what we do with our Shaggy Sports Network. And he just does a great job with the distribution of it, the professionalism of it, of even, you know, pregame interviews, halftime interviews, and different things like that. Like, he just does a phenomenal job. The guy kind of behind the scenes is James Lex. Uh, both of those guys are legit, man. And they just have a – they have an understanding of sports. You know, oftentimes you get into these media networks and they don't truly understand the logistics of, you know, sports networking. And, you know, they've done a great job. And then we brought on Drew Edwards, which is also kind of our SID, and then doing some dual role stuff with baseball. But he's done a, uh, another job just to amp us up. And, you know, you're wanting these guys, you're wanting these players to have this big-time experience of collegiate football, and the Sagar Sports Network makes that feasible. Our intro videos, you know, our, our interviews, and, and then the networking stream, we cover 12 different states with our roster. Uh, we've got three Hawaiians. So those are all things that allow us to, you know, really uh, allow our guys to get be seen by their family members, you know, with, with traveling, um, you know, uh, even financial means, the economic aspects of traveling and trying to get there every week. Sagu Sports Network makes it feasible for our guys to get a, a, a big-time feel. It definitely is. It's definitely a, a D1 feel. Uh, Lex and I go uh, back to uh, the beginning of NAIF ball. Um, so love James there. Great, great dude. Um, so looking at your season here from a year ago, um, y'all lose a couple of games early, obviously to, to the kind of the, the heavy hitters in your conference, whether it be, uh, Ottawa or Arizona Christian and, and you, you know, sandwich those with, with wins. Um, you, you lose a close one to, to Texas Westland. Um, but you end the season strong and you get invited to the victory bowl. Just, just tell me about that experience of getting that extra practice and getting to play a bowl game on your home campus? You know, I think um, you're, you're, tr- you're constantly talking to these guys about process and building a program. And, you know, football is the, the last great thing, you know, that we're building uh, that teaches men to be accountable for other men. And, and you're trying to get them to buy into the vision that, that we feel like we have with our coaches and, and, and our inside of our institution. So the victory bowl was, was that standard, you know, this year, obviously, man, you know, we're at the 10 yard line against Arizona Christian run out of time. Uh, we have a fumble scoop and score against Texas West that cost us that one. And then Ottawa, you know, they score late to kind of make that a little bit bigger of a gap than it was. Um, but our ability to buy into process is kind of what put us on a trajectory to, to rattle off five or six there in a row and kind of keep moving forward. And, um, you know, going into the Victory Bowl week, we were just talking about finish. Uh, 
big win against Langston. Uh, Langston's a historically great program to go into their place, uh, pull off that win, uh, you know, against just super talent. There's so much talent out there. Uh, that environment with the band and, you know, that you talk about a big time feel, man. Langston does a great job. Uh, you can't even hear yourself think uh, when their band gets cranked up, which is fun. You know, it's, it's a blast. Um, so that win, you know, I think coming into the bowl game, there was a little bit like, okay, guys, stay in the, stay in the fight, fight. And the thing that we told our guys is from this point on, only two teams are going to end – NAIA football teams are going to end their season with a win. And it's got a chance to be us. And then it's going to be the national champion. Uh, so, you know, that was a big selling point. And then, you know, the, the ramifications of finishing – what we called our reap results season, which was basically, you know, uh, outward evidence of an internal belief and, you know, us seeing the results of all the, all the sewing that we had done. Uh, so that man, it was huge. You know, our, our guys got a ring. Uh, that's something they'll remember for a long time. You know, they're just going to remember they got to play in a bowl game. Uh, they got to have that experience and, 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 you know, the, all the, all that comes with that, uh, you know, we did a community service project. I think the NCCA does a great job of tying in to who they are as a, as an organization, you know, from a servant standpoint, from a Christian standpoint, it was just awesome experience, really proud of our guys. And, you know, in, in 20 years, they're just going to know they want a bowl game. Uh, and that, that's the great part about it. I'll say this, my, my buddy, John, who runs this with me has a mid South division ring. That boy trots out that Faulkner ring all the time. I no mean, doubt. that's a that's a big honking ring. I mean, that's something that you can have on and and show off forever. It it don't matter what level it is. You got a ring. Exactly. So afterwards, uh, you get the call to go and be the head coach of the West team at the Senior Classic. You know, we talked to James Miller, um, who coached on the other side. Uh, on the east side and and got his opinion on it but but just talk take us through uh the senior classic week and uh that impact there on some guys that you don't necessarily get to uh work with it was really cool man because we met i met a guy named coach finley who's the head coach at uh waldorf great guy he brought chopper with him and then coach garner was actually our our dc coach garner uh we got to track him back stories nai stories Coach Garner's first year as a head coach, he coached against me when I was a player at SAGU. Um, my second year in 2019, I was head coach at SAGU. We coached against each other, and then we got to coach together. So, you know, you get into the, the community, uh, you know, the, the, the small community of NAI football. That was a cool experience. Uh, I got to take uh, one of my best assistants, Coach Paramore, over there with me to kind of help with that. So, you know, we got to do that. And then there was a lot of Sooner kids there. Uh, so, man, getting to be there with them. Uh, Austin McCullough was our quarterback, phenomenal kid, did a great job. We had John Cole. Um, you know, we just had a few of those Sooner guys. But then, you know, getting to realize, you know, and, and kind of bring it all together because, you know, like I told them, the greatest part was the community aspect. Uh, a lot of NAI coaches have so many um, roles. We don't get to travel the world and just go hang out. So it was cool of the NAI to get us all together. And, you know, we even got to spend time with the other staff. I spent time with Coach Miller. He's a phenomenal uh, football mind, uh, you know, and, and we got to sit and have breakfast with him. Uh, you know, so just getting the community aspect was really good. Uh, I thought those guys did a good job. NAI did a good job of trying to structurally fit in into the, the ramifications of trying to, you know, you're, you're trying to factor in budget. You're trying to tie in the national championship. And there's so many different moving parts. I thought it was awesome, man. Uh, the entire experience was good. Uh, thankful for those guys and, and all they did, man. Just It was a really cool experience. Wasn't Durham fun, though, just as an aside? Just a fun place. Yeah, it's cool. We got to go to Bull Durham and kind of tour that place. Really cool experience, man. Just, you know, those guys are too young to even value that, but it's the old heads. Uh, you right. know, we're looking yeah. for Kevin Costner walking around, so it was pretty awesome pretty cool to see the to, to see the actual bull and and do all that sort of fun stuff so moving on to your team this year you do lose jordan barlow he's going pro but other than that y'all are locked and loaded for another season of of lion football whether it be your workhorse in the backfield and keaton dudick I, I shouldn't even say that because the, the cat had almost 500 receiving yards and five touchdowns through the air. 
your your all purpose weapon there, or, or whether it be Zachariah Johnson out out wide or Jamal Long. Um, you know, talk to me about um, one replacing your quarterback, but two uh, growing as an offense. Uh, you know, that's the thing. Like we we have really tried to focus this off season on how we can logistically just, uh, you know, advance. We've been studying with a lot of different guys. Uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to, to go in some of these division one schools and, and watch spring ball and, you know, talk with their coaching staffs and really study scheme uh, quarterback. We, we rotated six guys in spring uh, ball. Uh, we brought in a junior college guy to Mississippi. Uh, and then we got a grad transfer out of Henderson state. And then we've got a couple of young guys that, um, you know, that, that we like within the system. Uh, and, you know, they're just – they're all going to come on and uh, develop. The pieces are there. I just told them, I was like, guys, you just got to manage. Uh, you just got to know how, how big of a – you know, uh, how much horsepower you got when you when you, you get behind the wheel. Uh, you know, our, our center, Evan Greathouse, he's a four-year starter for us because of COVID. You know, and I, I told COVID – I told our staff and our players that, you know, the, the burdens of COVID are now becoming the blessed blessings of COVID uh, because all these guys are fifth-year guys, uh, you know, and, and we return everybody on defense. Uh, you know, offensively, we return three starting offensive linemen. Uh, Zachary and Zachary are two twins that are in the slot. Uh, Jamal's back. Uh, you know, we, when Jamal got hurt last year, we had a guy step up named Paulo Didi who did a phenomenal job. But, I mean, it, it all kind of lynches back to, to Duddick. Uh, you know, and, and Duddick does a great job of creating balance for us, uh, forcing some box integrity out of defenses. And then, you know, our deal is just utilizing him in space. So I don't care if I pitch it, kick it, throw it, punt it, roll it. Ever how he's touching it, you know, he's going to touch it. And um, he's worked extremely hard this offseason, have appreciated his mindset. You know, and th then you get defensively, uh, you, you return Belcher, you return Drake. Uh, up front, um, Noah Gibson is another guy that whose name doesn't get called a lot, but he he does a great job for us. Then our then our back end crew, all our backers, we're really deep at linebacker. We return basically our three deep at the linebacker position, uh, and then you know DBs with Kevion and Lot uh, McLean on the other side, and then Keyshawn Kelly Moss, and you know then then you got an All American sitting back there, kind of controlling everything with Gowdy who's kind of lining us up and, you know, God, he's a coach's kid. Uh, I've known his dad for a long time and he just, he oozes a, of a coach's kid who's extremely intelligent. And then, you know, you get into the X factors of the game and you start talking about Woodley and uh, utilizing him in big moments and, you know, kickers, uh, you know, they're, they're just, they're, they're, they're have tos. And he's one of the hardest working guys we got, man, in the weight room and just all of his craft. And, uh, you know, we're ex excited about him and, you know, there, there's so many more names. Uh, Antoine McDowell's an All-American. He returns at guard. Uh, you know, and so, you know, we've seen all these things. And then we've signed a few pieces to the puzzle uh, that we're really excited about. Uh, just got to finalize our, our trigger man there at quarterback, uh, letting our defense become, you know, more multiple and, and continue to have the mentality we want them to have and create breaks on special teams. It's, it's, it's fun times. And I'll tell you this. The biggest thing I've been proud of is our leadership. We've created three levels of leadership within our, our team where we take them through a leadership academy program that I teach out of. And, and now we're into three levels of that leadership. So we're at 37 guys who have been through leadership training, who've been through leadership curriculum, who've been asked to make decisions. And when you get 37 deep into player-led uh, programs, you feel really good about what, what the direction you're going. And that's where you should be in year five. Uh, you know, I think sometimes – and that's what I love about NAI. Administrations will allow you to build something, and they don't have such a quick trigger on you. They allow you to build it from the ground up and do it in a manner that's sustainable. Uh, oftentimes at these higher levels, they're like, you better get this done now or you'll be looking for another job. So um, – but, you know, those are all things that we're excited about and excited about the direction we're going. So that kind of feeds into my next question. You know, it's it's been for the last few years that that Sagu has been kind of a team that they'll bite you. But to to play consistently with with the Langstons and the the Ottawa's and the Arizona Christians has has been. Uh, kind of the struggle for y'all at times. So how do you, how do you move from kind of the the top of that mid tier to 
really becoming the threat to win the Sooner? Uh, you know, I think so much is mentality. Uh, you know, we talk to our kids all the time. What are your expectations going to this? You know, like, what do you truly believe? You know, catching an Ottawa game two is really hard. Uh, you know, but you, you want to get to a point where Ottawa thinks catching Sagu is in week two is hard. So, uh, you know, again, it's mentality there. Um, I think uh, football comes down to five plays. Um, for us, you know, we can itemize about 12 plays uh, in those three losses that if, if, things happen differently, results probably happen differently. Uh, you know, we're wanting to flip the five plays, but then also in, in our growth, we're wanting to take the games that are close and now we're wanting to flip five more plays. So now we start to create an expanse, uh, you know, the, the scoreboard and uh, doing some different things. So, you know, we talk in the ramifications of five plays um, and, you know, we've, we've itemized those and just our mentality going into those uh, and into those contests. You know, and I really think and, and that's kind of what I talked to our staff about. Go back to the last regular season, last normal, what we view as normal was 2019. We go over, uh, you know, we, we we come back spring of 20, kind of flip our recruiting model, do a great job. And then do that COVID year. Uh, we play seven games over 27 weeks. So, you know, whatever that looked like. But for us, from 2019, the last regular normal season to 2021 and seeing our body of work and our drastic uh, turnaround, you, you feel really good about where you are, but you know you're not where you want to be. And I think that's been the coolest thing about this offseason is there's not much contentment. There was no foot off the gas with our guys. Uh, you know, there was no foot off the gas with our coaches. Uh, there was definitely like, you know, we need to be better schematically. We need to study more schematically as coaches. We need to be more efficient. Uh, you know, our vision of our program is to be consistent and efficient. Uh, you know, we need to be more consistent with our standards. We need to be more efficient in how we how we prepare for games, how we function throughout a game week, how we handle an off season. You know, because this is the first true off season our team has had, or any team has had since honestly spring of 2019 because spring of 20 you know we took the longest spring break ever uh so you know like not- this has been fun you know we had spring ball we did spring ball before spring break we went spring break so we're actually going to get two lift phases before our guys go home in the summer which we thought was extremely important uh, you know we're, we're very close to breaking ground on our new stadium uh which is man that's exciting uh, so there's just a lot of things that you look around going, you're, you know, you're seeing the vision to unfold, uh, and man, you're just trying to honor, um, man, just honor, work, honor the institution, honor the giftings you have and, um, you know, and just stay on that trajectory. That's, that is really exciting breaking ground on a new stadium. Cause I know y'all, y'all share with, with the high school, um, but to have your own spot where you're, you're not having to bus in or anything like that. That's, that is that's super cool. But, you know, at the same time, that stuff costs costs money and, and all <laughs> that good stuff. So that um, so my question then is, what do y'all do as a SAGU, whether it be as a, a larger athletic department or as a football program to connect with your um, football and non-athletic alumni and your and your fans to create that ongoing support, whether it be on the field on game day? or off the field in building programs and getting to do things like build fun new stadiums? Yeah, well, you know, uh, our director of advancement, which is um, Mr. Rick Bowles, is a SAGO alum, uh, has a heart for athletics. And since he's got here, uh, man, he has just poured uh, a lot into athletics and a lot of time. And what we're getting to is you got to understand SAGO football started – and for you to understand where people are, you have to understand the history of, of any institution. So Sagan football started in 1998. Uh, I got there in the fall of 2001, started quarterback from 01 to 04. So I was in those early years. Well, when you start talking alumni basis and actually having the alumni that can financially back stadium builds and renovations, uh, you're looking for alumni to be in their 40s to 50s range. Uh, so we're just now, as a, as a program, getting to the point that our football alumni base is at an age, <coughs> excuse me, to to really pour into, uh, you know, a stadium build and, and locker room renovations and those type of things. So, man, we're still a very, really young program when you look in that regards. Uh, you know, and 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 you've got to understand our alumni base. Um, 
we're very ministry driven. Uh, we don't have engineers. Uh, we don't have, you know, doctors. Uh, we've got uh, pastors. Uh, we've got missionaries and, you know, we got businesses and we got a lot of coaches. Uh, so, man, you know, we're, we're high on calling and sometimes, you know, low on funds. But, you know, we understand as an institution that when we graduate from SAGU, that God's given us a calling. We're going to pursue that calling. So, but it's, it's exciting times because now I'm starting to see alumni come back and, you know, uh, and they're, they're really excited about what we're doing. They love the branding. Uh, we're big believers in branding within our football program. Um, you know, and, and so they're starting to see this and you just create momentum. And here's the deal. Winning creates that bottom line. Uh, we're, we're driven by winners. Uh, so, if we can continue to stay on that trajectory, uh, winning, we're seeing transformation in our student athletes, uh, you know, through the way we teach them and leadership and, you know, our, our faith, uh, our focus, faith focused institution. Uh, and you start seeing that transformation and you start seeing the, the wins and the Saturday results of things. Uh, people get behind it, man. And, you know, it's exciting, but I would say, you know, and then even Dr. Godding, our athletic director, who was my coach. Uh, so sometimes I think he still thinks I'm 19. Uh, uh, you know, and, and, and probably I still think I am when I'm in the room with him. Uh, but, you know, he's extremely intelligent and does a phenomenal job. I, I value his leadership in my, in my life, uh, personally. And then also, you know, in the role I'm at and, uh, so it's just fun times, man. We're excited. Uh, obviously, economically, you look around and go, oh, can we really do this? But, you know, we just we know that that God honors our dreamers. And, man, we're dreaming big. And we know that he's going to continue to honor us if we'll stay faithful to what he's called us to do. That is – ain't no lie there. Um, and that's that's good for whether it be football, whether it be – in in your in your ministry context or whether it be your life in general that's that's good stuff right there well coach i, I want to thank you for coming on tonight and uh, spending some time with us and uh can't wait to see how things shake out in in the fall i'm look it's it's beginning of of april and and uh, you know basketball has just gotten over um for for both the nai and the ncaa baseball's going going strong but it won't be too much longer before they wrap up with the with the world series in lewiston but football is coming let's go strap it on let's rock it's so much fun so thanks again for coming on the show we hope you enjoyed this episode of the naif ball podcast presented by adcraft usa be sure to contact them for all your custom apparel merch and uniform needs Thanks also to Mommy Bay Turf and Turf Nation, as well as Leading Edge Fundraising for their support of the podcast. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to the podcast as well as to our YouTube channel. Leave us a review if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. As always, if you'd like to support what we do, head over to patreon.com slash n-a-i-a-f-b-a-l-l and become a patron. We can't do what we do without our sponsors and listeners like you.